The Astroworld tragedy has no doubt left a dark cloud over Travis's legacy. With over 300 hospitalized, 10 dead, including a 9-year-old child, this was the biggest concert catastrophe over the last 40 years. Now, most of Travis's sponsorships have been suspended, which include the release of his new air trainers and a clothing line with Dior. But what are the long-term implications of this incident? And will Travis ever make a comeback? That's what we're going to find out today. Astroworld is one of the biggest crowd control disasters in recent times. With some fans jumping over the barricades to get in, the footfall was obviously much more than the security on the day can handle. And it got to the point where literally thousands of people were crushed and weren't able to breathe. While many fans in the crowd chanted at Scott to stop the show, some even climbed up the television camera tower to inform the cameraman about what was going on. But even though authorities knew what was happening, no action was taken. At one point, Scott even asked people to make way for an ambulance that was in the crowd so that they could help out someone that was passed out. But he still didn't stop the show. While the person was being treated, he stood there and started humming, doing an auto-tune hum into the mic while making direct eye contact with the victim. Which is some really weird shit. But the real question becomes, who is to blame at the end of the day? Is it Travis? Is it the event management company Live Nation? Is it the police and the fire marshals? And the truth is, well, Everyone, kind of. And although a case could be made that Travis didn't know the extent of the damage until it was much later, a lot of the blame does lie in his hands, not only as the main organizer of Astroworld, but also as the artist on stage performing and actually looking over these thousand people to see that there was obviously an issue. I mean, take a look at this old clip of an old Linkin Park gig where Chester and Mike actually stopped the show because of concerns of crowd safety. Hey, yo, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yo, we got a little problem Pick up here. Up. Pick them up right Everybody now. Everybody up. Sorry, you guys. We got to look out for safety first, for real. Nobody gets hurt. That's hey, number yo. one. Hey, yo. We'll play this shit, the whole shit again if you guys get up, if you guys are all right. Okay, watch yourselves. I'll tell you what, I care more about every single one of you fucking people in the crowd than I do about this show. Travis didn't really make things better for himself with a badly shot Instagram apology. I just want to send out prayers to the to the ones that was lost last night. And an even more socially tone deaf interview with Charlemagne. It, like you go, you do these shows honestly to you know for people to have the best experience, you know. And At the end of the day, all his fans wanted was some kind of acknowledgement that they had been let down by their idol. But Travis kept shifting the blame and accountability and never really took a stance in either of those videos. And what makes matters worse is, this isn't the first time that Travis has even shown this kind of behaviour. There was an incident in 2017 where he was arrested in Arkansas and pled guilty to inciting a riot. And also an incident involving Kyle Green where he convinced a fan to jump off a balcony and the fan sustained serious injuries and even permanent paralysis. But the worst out of all these incidents was a moment where somebody tried to steal Travis's shoe while he was crowd surfing and he eventually asked security and fans to beat him up while the show was going on. You tried to take my shoe? Fuck him up! Fuck him up! Fuck him up! Shortly afterwards, Nike announced through the Sneakers app that they would temporarily suspend all Travis Scott's releases out of respect for the victims. But out of all the collaborations that Travis has been involved in, his sneaker collaborations have by far been the most culturally impactful. And here to talk more about that impact is my colleague, sneaker expert and stand-in for the Pillsbury Doughboy, Vedansh. Take it away, Vedansh. Okay, so why and how did Travis Scott sneakers become popular? Uh, quite a few reasons to it. Them being design, the timing, his own personality. Like, he was dating Kylie Jenner for a good while. It's like hard to be unnoticed when you're dating Kylie. Secondly, the timing and what he chose to do when was perfect. Just you could not have timed anything better. 
He started off with the Air Force One, the classic all white Air Force One, which everyone in the world loves. Put his stamp to it with the replaceable swooshes, but didn't do a lot to it. It was still the most recognizable shoe on the planet, but with Travis Scott's stamp on it. Uh, then he went mainstream with the Jordan 4, again, in a very classic blue colorway. And at the same time, after that, we saw rumors of the friends and family Travis Falls. It's He did everything right, what you need to do right when you like collaborate with Nike on a sneaker. In terms of like availability and how releases are planned, what Silhouette is chosen to do when and in what manner. Plus his rise in terms of like collaborations also just coincided with his rise as an artist. 17 to 20 were like some of his greatest hits music wise. And at the same time, we saw classic sneakers like the Travis Scott Jordan 1, the Travis Scott Dunk, the, then coming to the Fragment collab, the lows and the highs. Then with experimental silhouettes like the Jordan 6, the Travis Scott 270s. And then we heard rumors about the Air Max 1 and then the reverse mocha lows. It was just good mainstream stuff matched, always matched with uh, leaks and teases towards the future and again his story with especially let's say the Travis Dunks for example right he took inspiration from the Stussy Dunks which were one of the first few iconic grail dunks of all time and to put his story on the Travis Dunk with the pink laces and with the pink laces on some of his other collabs which took inspiration from a legendary shoe helped connect the audiences much much better to the story he was trying to create plus the fact that he was modeling for the Dior capsule before they came out and again Travis has just especially in the last few years has just always been around he's done multiple collaborations be it Fortnite, McDonald's now with the triple collab the Fragment triple collab he's just always been around and that's credit to him his vision for art especially like with the resale economics involved with Travis Scott sneakers they've all performed incredibly well um, they're again very 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 well made shoes with incredible design language so in terms of like just as a business standpoint everyone would want to buy and then sell a pair of Travis Scott sneakers because historically all of them have sustained value and have kept growing and are still growing despite what has happened so for that reason again everyone is drawn towards money and tra Travis Scott sneakers are money and secondly, they just look super cool, especially, again, we'll go back to it, but with the reverse swoosh, like no one has played with the Nike swoosh in the last 30, 40 years. And for Travis to come in and do that and to make it iconic and give himself and his sneakers that identity is incredible. And again, it relates a lot with the audience and helps sneakerheads just buy and buy more of his stuff because of the story. Now, given the fact that Travis is one of the most influential figures in sneakers behind Jordan and Virgil, we're not sure if Nike is really going to cancel his collaboration altogether. They've never had like a standard approach to these things and it really depends on the extent of the crime and press scrutiny. Lance Armstrong got his deal revoked after he was accused of doping. Manny Pacquiao lost his deal after some homophobic comments. And of course, Oster Pistorius lost his deal after he, you know, shot and murdered his girlfriend on Valentine's Day. This is a really fun video. It does look highly unlikely that Nike would ever let him go. Uh, Travis sneakers will constantly be released, which really leads to the question of what we can do as consumers. And now, I really don't want to get into a conversation of can you separate the art from the artist because we'll be here for hours. We can't do this in a five minute video. We'll need like an hour long, 10 episode mini series and we still won't get to the fucking bottom of it. But for now, I don't think there's any moral baggage attached to listening to Travis Scott's music or wearing Travis's sneakers. Only time will tell whether this will leave a lasting impact on his brand. Will the hype still remain for Travis's sneakers or will it never be the same? That's what we want to know from you. Let us know how you feel about the incident, about Astroworld, about Travis's sneakers. Would you keep buying Travis's sneakers? We don't know. Let's figure it out. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.